In 2023, there's not many brands remaining that have some sense of exclusivity and mystique surrounding the badge and manufacturer. When you look at brands like BMW, Audi, Mercedes-Benz, heck, even Maserati and Porsche, they've all become mainstream thanks to their SUV lineup. If you go buy a BMW X5 or Porsche Cayenne, you're just one of thousands. You're no longer unique on the roadways. But Range Rover is a bit different for a few reasons. One, the Range Rover Sport and Range Rover is far more expensive than its closest competitors, but also the Range Rover brand in general is a lifestyle and also a sense of being a status symbol that a lot of manufacturers have lost over the last 20 to 25 years. Now today we're taking a look at the third generation Range Rover Sport. There's a lot new with this model, even though from the outside it kind of looks like last generation. But in this video, we're gonna go over everything. We're gonna take a look at what is new with the exterior, the interior, take it out for a test drive, and also see why if you are looking at buying a brand new SUV that is luxurious and premium, then maybe taking a look at the 2023 Range Rover Sport might be a great decision. Now, before we get in this video, I'll let Jaguar Land Rover Peabody in Peabody, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Jaguar and Land Rover inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. Oversaturation has become a rather pivotal obstacle in the premium SUV market, with even high-end luxury manufacturers like Aston Martin, Bentley, and Lamborghini all developing a utility vehicle of their own. But it's not just the array of contenders that has left this segment feeling watered down. There's simply a lack of premier SUVs with the curb appeal that's special and different. The Range Rover product line has always been the exclusive brand that draws in a wealthier buyer. But in 2023, how does an SUV like the Range Rover Sport continue to be prestigious? Is it styling? interior comfort and features, or an ownership experience that's unmatched in this segment. Maybe it's a bit of everything, but this new model year and generation brings a revived energy to what could be seen as being a stale market. Starting off with pricing, the model we have today is the Dynamic SE trim, also known as the P400, and would be the recommendation by many as being the best value for the Range Rover Sport despite the autobiography and SV offering better performance. While many will assume that this new generation isn't too different from its predecessor, don't let its minor refreshed road presence fool you, as the 2023 model has been re-engineered, now being built on the same platform that underpins the full-sized Range Rover, and that alone affects dimensions, as this Range Rover Sport is now three inches larger. But it gets even more technical than that, as the Land Rover brand hired the one man that can take this lineup to a whole new level. In late January of 2022, Land Rover brought on the former chief engineer of Aston Martin, Matt Becker, the man responsible for the Aston Martin DBX and plenty of other Aston Martin and Lotus products. His main job for Land Rover right now is to help propel this brand to new heights and also bring them into the world of electrification, where the third generation Range Rover Sport will have a plug-in hybrid model and also a full EV product sometime later on down the road. Now, his involvement with Land Rover came a little too late to have any input on the full-size Range Rover, but when it comes to the Range Rover Sport, that's a bit of a different story. While we don't know the amount of input that Matt Becker has had on this Range Rover Sport, one thing is for sure, that this generation is nothing like its predecessor, but also it's a little different than the full-size Range Rover. And a lot of it is because of Matt's involvement with this vehicle and making it a bit more dynamic and fun than in prior model years. And it all comes down to the handling and cornering ability as this SUV feels similar to a BMW X5, Audi Q7, and in my mind is more athletic than a Mercedes-Benz GLE and definitely more than a Volvo XC90. Now, because Matt was focusing more on the handling for this SUV, it's lost that floaty feeling. I think that's what was giving this vehicle more that truck-like driving dynamics, where now this feels 
certainly sportier, it feels more aggressive, it feels more engaging. And it's also enhanced by the platform that the Range Rover Sport is now underpinned by, where this is the same chassis as the larger Range Rover. And with that, you get that better rigidity, you get more stiffness to the suspension, and also it feels more upscale and classier. And that's why when you are spending close to fifteen dollars to $20,000 more than the competition, this is what you want to experience. Something you'll be getting used to hearing about is the standard equipment, such as the air suspension, which can raise the Range Rover Sport to a ground clearance exceeding 11 inches, giving this SUV some serious off-road capabilities, but also a soft and comforting ride for when you're navigating city and suburban roads. Outwardly, you'll be immediately captivated by the Sport's new design language, which does take some inspiration from the Velar, especially with the LED headlight design but also the body lines and minor aesthetics that actually sets this SUV apart from its larger sibling. While maybe a little more minimalistic than before, it's unquestionably one of the best looking SUVs in this segment, as it accentuates the very essence of a reserved yet posh British vehicle. Blending in nicely on our model, the black exterior pack adds a lower profile quality and sportier demeanor to this SUV, that many buyers will likely option for, as it complements the sleeker front fascia for this generation. What's also noteworthy, even with the list of cosmetic improvements and alterations, the Sport retains the same image and appeal as the outgoing model, which some brands have difficulty carrying over to a new platform. Moving over to the side profile, our model is sitting on the optional 22-inch wheels, and we have equipped the red performance brake calipers, which provides the optimal amount of braking power for an SUV of this size and weight. While you can opt for the larger 23 inch tires or stick with the standard 21s, ride quality didn't suffer to our surprise. And even when traversing over uneven pavement, the Range Rover Sport's composure and ability to soften the bumps will make you feel as though you're riding on a cloud. You'll have power folding gloss black side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. As you make a way around to the back, there is a sense that Land Rover is going a bit more understated with their designs, as the thin LED lights that connects into the centerpiece of the rear fascia doesn't scream and shout at you at first glance. However, the Sport does appear to be streamlined and modern, and because it has a unique style compared to the larger Range Rover, it still makes its presence known within the lineup. Keeping the Sport looking aggressive, the dual exhaust outlets and curved roofline does add some dynamic qualities to this SUV. And with the full paint finish found throughout, the third generation continues on the tradition of being the posh and elegant alternative for this segment. Under the hood, this Range Rover Sport is powered by a 3-liter turbocharged inline 6-cylinder engine producing 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque, and is paired with a ZF8 speed automatic transmission. Seen across the family of Jaguar and Land Rover products, a 48 volt mild hybrid system does improve efficiency and add smoothness to the auto start stop system, while also playing a very minor role when accelerating. Based on the performance for the price, it's the Dynamic SE that's offering the best package, as its 5.4 second 0 to 60 time and impeccable straight line speed should put a smile on your face, while also not having you begging for a larger powertrain. Despite the transmission and suspension tuned primarily for leisure and comfort, the Range Rover Sport is willing to meet your demands when passing slower drivers or entering highways. With all-wheel drive coming standard, you'll have the year-round capability to handle winter road conditions but also the paths less traveled for the avid adventurer. For fuel economy, you're looking at right around 20 miles per gallon in the city and 25 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, you're greeted by 20-way power adjustable heated and ventilated Windsor leather seats for both the driver and passenger. And as you'd expect for an SUV reaching the $100,000 mark, these seats do have memory functionality. In today's automotive world, we'd associate luxury with how much intuitive technology you have at your fingertips. But Range Rover is still tailoring to those 
who desire the finer things in life, would seek comfort that far exceeds that of rivals in this market. This is further enhanced with the optional light cloud interior trim for the dashboard and door panels, providing a classy and very British-like cabin, which alone sets the stage for an opulent experience behind the wheel. In front of you will be a full digital instrument cluster, with a resolution and responsiveness that's on par with competitors. By using the haptic feedback buttons mounted on the steering wheel, you can scroll through different layouts and showcase the information that's relevant to you, such as a navigation map or going with traditional gauges. Then as we glance over to the infotainment system, this is Jaguar Land Rover's new PIVI Pro user interface that operates very much like a tablet. You'll have wireless Apple CarPlay, onboard navigation, and the 15-speaker Meridian audio system, and a list of amenities that can be found on this head unit, including the ability to fold and unfold the second row seats with a press of a button, adjust the headrests, bolsters, lumbar, and cushioning for the front seats, and even control the direction of your air vents while activating climate settings for the second row. Much like the Defender we had featured earlier this year, the layout is pretty straightforward, with a number of different icons that take you to different menus, including the Vehicle tab where you can lower and raise the air suspension. Helping to park the Range Rover Sport, you'll have a variety of camera angles, including a 360-degree 3D view so you don't scrape your wheels when parallel parking. Of course, with this being a Range Rover, you do have a trail cam as you traverse the off-road. Then beneath the user interface, you'll find the dials that control the three-level heated and ventilated seats, fan speed and temperature, and the touch-sensitive icons for the AC and front and rear defrosters. Tucked out of sight and barely visible is your wireless phone charging pad. For the center console, to the right of the gear shifter will be the drive mode selector, hill descent control, and start stop button, making everything within arm's reach, which in turn gives this SUV a driver-centric interior. For the center storage compartment, you'll have plenty of room for smaller items. And rounding out the front seating area, above will be a panoramic moonroof, which lets in an abundant amount of light into the cabin. Now for passengers in the second row of the Range Rover Sport, they're going to have around 38 inches of legroom, which would fall in line with other rivals in this market, such as the BMW X5 and Mercedes-Benz GLE. But where the Range Rover Sport stands out in my mind is with the amount of headroom, but also shoulder room as well, that you have with this vehicle. If you have someone on the height of six feet tall and above sitting in the back, they will not be hitting their head on the headliner because of the higher roof line, but also just the way in which the interior is shaped. What I also love too is that there's a lot of shoulder room as well, even though I'm sitting here by myself, I can actually move around and stretch a bit where I feel a sense that this vehicle is a lot bigger than it is in reality. Also, that's enhanced by the plushness of the seats. I don't know if that's the right word to describe how comfortable the seats all around in this vehicle are, but they're so forgiving, they're so supportive, where if you're fortunate enough to be sitting in the second row, you can just sit back, relax, and have no care in the world while your driver is dealing with the horrible commuters out there on the roadways these days. But also, you have the ability to just recline a bit and really feel as though that you're isolated from the outside world, which is something I really love about this vehicle. Then moving over to the center seat, you are gonna have some great placements for your feet, but there is a bit of a center hump, which will take away from legroom and possibly shoulder room. However, because the Range Rover Sport is rather wide, you can definitely fit a third person back here, no problem. Also, for those who do sit in the center seat, even though you do sit a bit higher up, you're not too close to that panoramic moonroof. Then on the driver's side, this seat is adjusted to someone of my height, around 5'5", and I have plenty of legroom here where I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the driving experience. What I also love too is that Land Rover used some nicer materials for the door panels and armrests, and it just feels very premium back here for sure, especially what you're looking for in an SUV at around $100,000. Also back here, you do have two rear air vents to go along with three level heated and cooled outboard seats. Four zone climate control is optional, so keep that in mind. We also have two USB-C inputs, a 12 volt outlet, and rounding out the second row seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders, 
but you also have a storage compartment as well for a smartphone. Now coming around to the back, of course you are gonna receive a power lift gate, but I feel lazy, so let's just use the key fob. And inside, behind the second row of seats, you're looking at right around 32 cubic feet of room to work with, which would be on par with the BMW X5 and Mercedes-Benz GLE. There's plenty of room back here if you are going on a road trip with the family, maybe you're going to soccer practice, or you're gonna go on that off-road excursion. There's plenty of room here where I was able to fit all my camera gear today, so that's two bags of camera gear, a gimbal box, and a tripod, and so had plenty more room to maybe go grocery shopping afterwards. I think that if you are going on that road trip, you could probably fit six, seven, eight bags of luggage, if not more. But then with the second row seats fold, you are looking at around 53 cubic feet of room, which will fall short compared to most vehicles in this market. And that's not something I think a lot of buyers who are purchasing a Range Rover Sport are too concerned about. Best of all is that the second row seats do raise and lower by themselves with a press of a button on the right side of the rear cargo area. It's also here where you'll find your haptic feedback buttons to lower and raise the air suspension. So that way you're not scraping or scratching the rear bumper of this vehicle when you are throwing in heavier items into your Range Rover Sport. Also on both sides of the rear cargo area, you have some cubbies for some smaller items, such as a couple of water bottles, car detail equipment, or maybe even a first aid kit. Better yet, beneath the floor mat, you are going to find a full-size spare tire. So if you do a counter flat on your road trips or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. And then finally, once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. So we're back behind the wheel of the 2023 Range Rover Sport. I have to be honest, this has been one of the most enjoyable driving experiences I've ever had behind the wheel of an SUV in the five years of doing reviews on this channel. And a lot of it is because of the inline six cylinder engine and the ZF8 speed automatic transmission. And let's see what the accelerations are like with this vehicle. <laughs> Gear shifts at 6,000 RPM. And really, it's not gonna be the quickest. I mean, zero to 60 times are above five seconds. And this is certainly not going to be a direct competitor to say a BMW X5M or even an M50i or Porsche Cayenne. But the 2023 model feels more well-rounded than it did in the past. And as I talked about earlier on in this review, it's mostly because it is built on that full-size Range Rover platform, but also because of Matt Becker's input on this SUV for this third generation, it feels a lot like the other SUVs in this segment that the Range Rover Sport is trying to compete against. Now, I think that objectively speaking, you could say that Range Rover maybe was falling behind to a certain degree just because when you look at what Mercedes, Benz, BMW, Audi, even Maserati is starting to come out with, that Range Rover had to change things up in one way or another. And for this generation, I think a lot of it is really down to the steering input and the cornering ability where this doesn't feel one dimensional. It's not overly luxurious to a certain extent when it comes to the driving experience like you would find with say a Volvo XC90, but it's also not going to be this all out track monster like you would find with some V8 powered SUVs in this price range and market. A lot of what this vehicle is giving you is that well-rounded experience, but also that lifestyle that you wanna have with the Range Rover Sport. The interior quality to me is so top notch, but also one step above a lot of competitors in this segment, including some German manufacturers. These 20 way power adjustable seats are so plush and they're so big, they kind of feel as though you're sitting on your couch at home. And that is not a bad thing at all because when you are driving a premium luxury SUV in this market, you wanna have those creature comforts. And that's exactly what you have here with the Range Rover Sport. But you can also adjust these seats to the ideal amount of comfort as well, which I think is really what makes the Range Rover Sport more unique and special in this price range. Now, of course, with the 2023 model, we have the updated infotainment system, the PIVI Pro user experience, and also this full digital gauge cluster, which I really love. The amount of customizability with this full digital gauge cluster certainly gives you that feel as though that it competes with the Audi MMI user interface and also Audi's virtual cockpit. So from a technological standpoint, this feels more on par with its closest rivals. 
Now, since the Range Rover Sport is a little bit bigger, it will create a bit of a learning curve when you are on these back roads. I've driven a lot of SUVs of this size, but it has taken some time for me to get used to the fact that it is rather wide and also long, especially when you are maybe driving by a car that's parked on the street or you have one coming at you. But it's still very maneuverable, where even though for an SUV of this weight, it gets out of its own way for sure. Now, getting into the overall vision, you do have a nice panoramic view. A pillars and B pillars are very aggressive, so keep that in mind when you are approaching an intersection or you're looking over your shoulder because there will be some blind spots there. So I would take it easy when you are approaching those stop signs or red lights. Then taking a look at side mirrors, they are decently sized. I can see what's directly behind me. And then looking out back, we do have the headrest in the way, which will create some visibility issues, but I can see what's directly behind me. So it's really great to see. And then when it comes to seat positioning, you do sit pretty high up in this vehicle, but Unlike its predecessor, it doesn't feel truck-like. This doesn't feel cumbersome in the corners. It doesn't feel weighted or heavy. This feels a lot like, say, a BMW X5 or Audi Q7, which is why I think that the Range Rover Sport for this generation will compete very nicely against its closest rivals. Now, I am in dynamic mode, which would be the mode I would be in at all times. And on these back roads, the steering is very fluid and direct and also very responsive as well. Of course, you are going to feel some of that body roll, so keep that in mind. This isn't gonna be the most dynamic or track-focused SUV in this market, but it certainly gets the job done and definitely keeps you fully engaged behind the wheel, and that's what's really most important for this SUV. Now, of course, it's still exclusive. It's still more expensive than, say, the Porsche Cayenne or Mercedes-Benz GLE, but the driving dynamics is certainly gonna feel more on par with them as well than it did in the past. And I think that's why the Range Rover Sport, in my mind, is going to draw in maybe some buyers who are ready to make that leap, ready to hop into a lifestyle brand for the first time. And they're definitely going to love what the Range Rover is offering. Now, a lot of journalists like to compare the Range Rover Sport to rivals such as the Porsche Cayenne or BMW X5M or M50i. But I think it's perfectly okay if you're somebody who wants to overlook some of the German competitors and maybe you're cross shopping this with say a Bentley Bentayga or Aston Martin DBX because it is an SUV that's more premium, more high end than what you're gonna find from more mainstream brands. And you see that with the pricing. With a base price of $85,000 for a base Range Rover Sport, and then for this model, you're paying over $100,000, you're getting a vehicle that really leans more towards a luxurious nature, a premium luxury experience, more so than what you're gonna find with say a Porsche Cayenne GTS or that BMW X5M. And I think that's why a lot of more wealthier buyers are drawn into Range Rover because it isn't trying to be something it isn't. Now, of course, with the inline six cylinder engine and the ZF8 speed, this is gonna have some sportier nature to it, but it's not going to have that aggressive V8 growl that you're gonna have in a Defender, especially with this particular trim. But I don't think that's a bad thing at all because most buyers who are purchasing a Range Rover Sport will be going to the malls and the shopping centers just outside of a big and larger city, or these will be seen in the pickup and drop off lines at some prestigious private school. And I understand the appeal now. I understand why a lot of buyers will bypass the BMWs and the Audis of the world for a Range Rover, because this is unique, it is special, and you can't quite put your finger on it. Because with the interior quality, with the oyster colored interior, with the soft touch materials on the dashboard, just the way this SUV looks and the way it feels when you start interacting with everything for the interior, this feels so much more unique and purposely built than what we see from most competitors, especially the mainstream rivals. This is more of the type of detail to the smaller aspects that you would find in say a Bentley or an Aston Martin, or maybe even what we see from Lamborghini now with the Urus. And I think that's why the Range Rover line still has that level of sophistication that so many brands have lost over the last 20 years to appeal to a wider range of consumers. Whereas the Range Rover Sport, it does come with that hefty price tag. And with that hefty price tag, you're part of that club. You're part of that inner circle that you're not going to get from a Mercedes Benz now, even with the GLE. And I think that's why 
I would say lean towards the Range Rover Sport if you can, because it's going to be a unique experience for you. So to quickly wrap up this review, the 2023 Range Rover Sport was well worth the wait. In the time that I had to wait for one to become available that wasn't already sold when it arrived at the dealerships, I was seeing these on the roadways and I was becoming very envious of those who were experiencing this SUV. And it's a bit of a surprise coming from me because I always felt that the Range Rover product line was becoming a bit stale outside of the Defender and of course the Velar. And I just never understood why I'd want to buy a Range Rover in the 2020s with so many other competitors coming along with vehicles that really gave you better performance, but also maybe some luxurious aspects that could give Range Rover a run for their money. But having experienced the Range Rover Sport today, I'm feeling very different about that assumption and those feelings because... This vehicle right here is the complete package. It has everything going for it. It has the looks, it has the interior styling, and it also now has the performance in my opinion. Now, even though from the outside, it does look like a mix between an Evoque and a Velar, it doesn't drive like either one of them because it is built on a separate platform. But also because it is built on that Range Rover platform and also, of course, with the steering being retuned, it doesn't feel truck-like as we see with the Defender. And I think if you're somebody who is looking for luxury first, go with the Sport because you're going to love the creature comfort. You're going to love the fact that the interior is all soft touch materials on the dashboard, on the door panels. It feels more purpose built for the on road experience. But also, this is a vehicle where you can throw your family in the back and go on that longer road trip. And it has that practicality that comes along with it. And of course, with the air suspension, it just feels very relaxing and comfortable where I think the Defender is a bit more hardcore and for a more specific type of buyer. But if you're somebody that's looking for a premium luxury SUV right now at around $100,000, something that's a bit more unique exclusive and also really gives you that experience and feeling of being more individualized and more individualistic then you are going to love what the Range Rover Sport is offering and if you are somebody that wants to go more upscale maybe you own a BMW X5 or Porsche Cayenne and you want something a bit nicer and a bit more exclusive then take a look at the Range Rover Sport. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.